All right, y'all. So in this video, uh, we're about to be talking about Forex. I'm going to do a quick breakdown of my style and approach to pretty much analyzing the charts, everything that I look for in order to decide whether or not it's time for me to make a trade. So I want y'all to stick around, um, check it out. It's going to be helpful, going to be juicy. Um, like it, share, subscribe, and let's get it. What's going on out there y'all so um right now what we're gonna go ahead and do is break down uh my method to pretty much spotting entry opportunities in the market um as you can see right now i identify an opportunity on the dollar swiss pair um this is the canadian oh yeah the swiss franker but yeah this is the dollar swiss pair um uh, pretty much, man, trading has just gotten to the point for me where it's just so easy. Like, um, <laughs> I'm, I'm loving it. Like, it's beautiful because I don't have to do as much thinking as I used to do. Um, when I first started out, I used to put so much pressure on myself. Pretty much, you know, wondering if I'm doing the right thing. But I don't want to waste too much time, uh, you know bragging about how easy it is. I'm going to show y'all um, an opportunity that's setting up. Uh, maybe I can make y'all some money uh, if y'all keeping up with me. So um, right now I'm looking at a sale opportunity setting up here on the dollar Swiss pair, um, the Canadian Swiss franc. Uh, right now um, I see a ABCD pattern completion setting up. If anybody who don't know about ABCD pattern completion, um, it's pretty much Fibonacci ratios, okay? So I live my life, my trading life, I should say, based off these ratios. So uh, I'm pretty much share with y'all my uh, my blueprint. Um, I always give this one out. This is pretty old, so um, anybody who's been keeping up with me already know. But this, these are the um, these are the uh, pair. The pretty much these are the harmonic sequences that I stick to and follow and as you can see the ABCD pattern completion is the or let me move this here um, the ABCD pattern completion is the one that we're spotting on the dollar Swiss pair so I want y'all to pay attention to that okay so um, these are the harmonic sequences that I pretty much um, used for my trade and lifestyle. Um, it makes everything a lot easier for me when I just pretty much uh, let these uh, six sequences run the show here. Uh, I don't do a lot of thinking. Um, that's the beauty of this uh, this trading plan that I'm uh, teaching you guys. I don't do a lot of thinking. So right now, like I said, I see an ABCD pattern completion uh, setting up on the dollar Swiss pair. So. Um, if you look at this ABCD pattern, uh, here it says AB equals 61.8 dash 78.6. So pretty much what I did, I just made a little cold so I can understand it enough to explain it. But pretty much um, 61.8 and Fibonacci is the golden ratio. And if you don't know about Fibonacci, go do some research. Um, I'm probably going to get into it a little bit later on, but now is not that time. Um, so you'll learn about the number 61.8, why that number is so important just uh, throughout existence. Um, but pretty much you're looking for a market retracement between 61.8 and 78.6, okay? So that's going to be the ABCD, the AB leg. So uh, when I go back to the, um, the Forex chart here, uh, what you're looking at right now is pretty much uh, let me see. Let me make sure I'm still recording this screen here. Give me just a second. Okay. All right. Yep. So, um, so right here, um, this is the forex chart here, and I'm going to show y'all what I mean when I say ABCD. So, 
I like to dumb it down. Uh, so I'm going to just pretty much grab a, a tool here. And I'm going to drop a letter on in there just so it can make a little sense, you know. All right. Uh, oh, we can't see that. So let me edit that. Okay. We got gray. That's not going to work on a black background, is it? I didn't think so. Uh, which I think we should go with. Mm, all, right, all right. You know what? Let's keep it simple. We'll go Snow White with it. So we have A. Okay, I guess I do have to type the text in, huh? Okay, so we have A. All right, this is our A point, and I want to make this a little bit bigger because, like I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to uh, disrespect you guys in any type of way, but I really want to dumb this thing down so it makes complete sense, like. Um, because I'm not the best teacher in the world, but uh, I was taught by my mentors that you don't have to be the best teacher. If you have a skill, teach that skill. And it's up to the student to know how to extract the necessary information. So I'm just putting it out there for y'all uh, to make y'all lives a lot easier, um, you know, and maybe y'all can do the same for someone else. But pretty much... Uh, this is our B point here. I'm going to put the B right there. So, okay, guys. So this is our A, B leg right here. This is where the move initially begins. Okay. So um, if I grab a Fibonacci tool and I draw the chart from swing low up here to this B point, swing high, okay. The market goes from A to B and then retraces aka pulls back into this level or range right here and if I drag this mouse over this level or range is 61.8 okay this is literally an inch outside of the 61.8 mark and it almost touches the 78.6 mark now, if you're thinking in your head, what are these marks? Like, I don't want you to focus too much on that. Once you learn about Fibonacci, that'll make more sense. Okay. What I'm trying to get you to understand is how I find how this trading opportunity is possible for you. So I don't want you to keep up with that for now. But pretty much, um, if you look at this point right here that the market retraced back into or pull, a.k.a. pulled back into, um, it's between the 618 and the 786. And if I'm obeying my chart here, my handy dandy, uh, you know, go to harmonic sequence chart here, um, AB must be between 61.8 and 786, which it is. So that's valid. And then I move on to the CD leg, which is going to be between 127 and 1618. So, how I would come up with that is, I'm going to go ahead and delete this Fibonacci chart for now. I'll be bringing it back soon, but for now I want to emphasize where C and D is. So, C would be here, at this point. And D completes the pattern somewhere here. Okay. So I don't know if the if it's gonna be either, you know, I don't know if if D is gonna complete here or here or here or here or here. But I do know it should be somewhere within this range. So, like, even if it doesn't happen for another month, let's say we were to get consolidation in this in the straight line, the market was to just stay at this price level, which is something that had never happened. But just hypothetically speaking, if the market was to stay at this price level right here, where you see this line, and I'm dragging a D across, the market was to stay right there, and then a year later decide to finally come here to this price level or this range here. 
Well, st this, this is still the same zone. So we don't know exactly where D is going to complete, but you are looking for this price range here. So I'm going to just for, you know, for peep's sake, just put that D right there. We'll hypothetically say that it'll complete somewhere in there. OK, so um, that should be good there. Now, the reason I say here is because if I take a Fibonacci tool, last time I drew it from point A to point B. This time I'm going to draw it from point B to point C. Okay. And when I do that, okay, and you look at this uh, blue uh, range level I put here, it literally falls between the 127 and the 1618. And if I look back at my chart, that's exactly what I should be looking for here. Uh, I'm looking for it to fall between 127 and 1618. Okay. So here is where my trading strategy is determining we should get a market reversal. Okay. What does this mean for you? Well, this means you can set up your lot plan and your trade ahead of time. You can determine how much you're willing to risk. How much you're willing to gain and you have to have that figured out before the trade even exists okay understand what you're going to give up and understand exactly what you're aiming for so figure out a win-loss ratio that works for you I usually try to do two to one so hypothetically speaking if I'm willing to uh, go for and gain a hundred pips then I'm usually willing to uh, risk at least half of that. So I'm willing to risk 50 pips. So, um, you know, if I'm going for a thousand pips, I'll be risking 500. That's a two to one win loss ratio. Okay. So find one that works for you. Some people use one to one. Um, if they're risking a hundred pips, then they're willing to gain or look for a hundred. And some people have no win loss ratio at all. You know, I knew a guy who was very profitable, um, without a, you know, ratio, but um, he saw a lot of profit, but he wiped out a lot of accounts as well. So, like, I mean, that didn't seem like a lot of fun. That's why I'm just putting it out there for y'all so that it make more sense. But um, anyway, like I said, we should be getting the market reversal somewhere uh, between the 127 and 1618. I'm not a psychic, so I don't know when that's going to happen. This is an hour four time frame, so each candle represents four hours. And if I spread this thing out a little bit here, uh, this looks messy. Ugh, I really hate the way this looks. Anyway, um, yeah, this is disgusting. Uh, let's see if I go to the daily time frame, what that looks like. I guess that makes a little bit more sense, but uh, like I said, y'all, this is an opportunity for you to get in. So hypothetically speaking if you wanted to get in this and anybody watching this can set up this opportunity what you're going to do is you're going to go ahead and enter the market at this price level here where you see me dragging this so since it's already one there i'm going to just uh, remove that and we'll go off this price level here so go ahead and put you a sell limit order at 1.02690 okay 1.02690 just in case it's too small for you to see on the screen there okay that's where the sale limit order is going to go because when you put in the sale limit order it's going to give you a it's going to ask you what your price level is what price level do you want to execute this trade at so 1.0 two six nine zero okay and then what you're gonna do is um, you can do two things to determine whether or not where your stop loss is gonna be set because we always set our stop loss point blank period so I usually try to go um, a notch above or outside of the uh, the reversal zone so for instance, uh, here, I, I would consider this 
a real good notch outside of the reversal zone. And just so this marks our stop loss, I always change the color to something that represents stop, which is usually red. That's orange. That won't work. So we'll go here. All right. So also what helps me more is um, once I do determine, um, you know, once I do put that stop loss a, a, a notch outside of the trade, the reversal zone, if just in case the market decides to keep pushing. And it gets to this point, I'm like, I'm done, okay? So, I, I, you know, obviously it's wrong. So, it's all a part of the trading plan, um, the one I've been using that's working very consistently for me. And um, what you're going to do to um, determine, uh, like, you know, for yourself is where I said, I recommend uh, it's easier if I go to a higher time frame here. So, let's see. I'm going to try to make sense out of this. Okay, so I'm going to have to stick to this daily time frame. Um, anyway, so what I do is I'll go back and determine um, if, if this is a decent level to leave my stop loss. So let's see here. All right, so from what I can tell... Um, yeah, this is uh, definitely, um, you know, a structure level here. So if you wanted to, you could either you could also raise um, your stop loss here because this seems to be a, a real support and resistance level based off here, here and here. So you're just building a case for entry for yourself at this point. Um, like I said, it's, it's up to you, but I usually just go a notch outside of. Um, Notch outside of that uh, reversal zone there, so I'll put that back. So, for those of you out there that want to follow this trade, I recommend going ahead and putting that stop loss at 1.05540. And if it's too small to see, I'll repeat it again that's 1.05540. Okay, all right, so. Let's see here. I'm going to get another horizontal line and I'm going to show you how where to take the profits. Usually 38.2 is the best place to take the profits. Um, I typically measure the ratio just to know where I'm at because, like I said, I usually do two to one. So, um, right here, I would say is about roughly. Um, one to one. So if I take my profits here and let me just change the color of that so that would make more sense. How green. All right. So if I'm taking profits, I'll probably more than likely put them at the 786 because that's about two to one if you measure it. So our stop loss is here. Trade will be entered here and 786 gives me about that two to one range. Okay, at almost it's almost one to one if you look at that. So that's why 38.2 would actually be um, uh, also a better bet. So if you want to get in this trade live, you following this, go ahead and put this first um, the first take profit at 0.988. That's 0 0.98828. Okay. So um, it's really that simple. Like, I don't complicate it. Um, I just wanted to do this one real quick for y'all, for anybody following, just so you can see beforehand. You get the chance to see this live happen. Um, it's incredible how these ratios um, you know, are respected throughout the market. Just not only the market, but just life itself in so many different ways. So, like I said, Fibonacci is another topic we'll be eventually talking about. I'm going to be diving into uh, what these ratios actually represent because I know it probably doesn't make a lot of sense to y'all. But um, as long as you're keeping up, uh, I'm going to make sure I drop some gems, stuff that's useful for y'all. And um, like this video, share it. Subscribe.
subscribe to the channel so you'll know when I'm dropping more. And uh, I'm going to see y'all in the next one.